Business Conversations was founded in 2012 uh, and to open a critical path for a dialogue between art and science. We present many artists from many disciplines whose work resonates with science. We're interested in connecting art and science through programs, educational outreach, and pu public events like this one, which demonstrate the conversation and synergy between art, <coughs> science, and technology. We're very excited this afternoon to be presenting a STEAM conversation. It's our second annual, uh, Learning Through the Lens of Art and Science. Um, it is, uh, we are doing that in partnership with Cambridge Creativity Commons in the guise of Kyle Brown, who will be leading our hands-on activity and who worked with me to make this possible. Um, and we're joined by members of the Science, which is an amazing new organization which fosters collaborations and a new way to think about and fuse the languages of fashion design and science. Unfortunately, uh, the science founder, Yuli Fuentes Medell, who worked on this as well, um, can't join us this afternoon, but we're pleased to have strategic creative uh, lead, Julianne Garon, moderate an enlightening conversation with the winners of the Science 2014 oh competition, <laughs> Team Cycle Couture, uh, Carlos Villamil and Laura Ndolfi. Um, following the, uh, their conversation um, and participation with you all, there's, you probably saw tables in the back. We're going to have a hands-on um, workshop um, that Kyle will oversee. And um, we, uh, you'll have the opportunity to uh, observe and experience how teaching um, them together can come up excited and engaging engagement. So, Julianne Garral, I'll just give you brief files, uh, earned a master's degree in industrial design um, at RISD, Rhode Island School of Design in 2008, where she later taught the course, New Products for Performing Sports, and served on a five-year academic advisory committee. She's had many uh, various roles at the MIT Media Lab, including being a TA and the New Balance Corporate Liaison. She received a BA in art, uh, history and architecture from Bowdoin. Carlos Villamel is a Colombian multidisciplinary designer based in Boston since 2006. He has a background in industrial design and has worked extensively in graphic design and marketing, as well as fashion and footwear. His international experience includes co appliance design for Whirlpool uh, in Italy, co founding and really an award winning uh, jewelry design company and more recently designing accessories uh, in Spain. 2012, he um, obtained a fashion design certificate from Mass College of Art. And um, his personal focus is um, experimental garment-based and zero-waste design, and I'm sure he'll talk about that more. Uh, he's currently studying at Harvard University for a master's in sustainability and environmental management. Laura Dolphy is an Italian biomedical engineer, currently an entrepreneur in residence at MGH Cancer Center and a research associate um, with Harvard MIT Institute for Medical Engineering and Science. She holds an MS, BS in Material Science and Engineering and a PhD in Biomaterials from the University of Naples in Italy. Upon graduation, she joined the Harvard MIT Division of Health Science and Technology, working in the labs of Dr. Glazer Edelman and Robert Langer on several projects spanning from devices for local drug delivery to tissue engineering uh, approaches for cell therapies. Um, she has um, uh, hands-on business uh, managerial experience and trained at the Sloan and Harvard Business Schools as well. She strongly believes in the power of outreaching initiatives to promote research awareness and foster the public's audience public audiences discovery of the beauty of science. So I'm going to lead, uh, let them uh, continue, and um, here we go. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, on behalf of Yuli and myself, I just want to say that the science is really pleased to be here. Um, and I'm very excited to be here with Carlos and Laura. Um, the science is fundamentally founded on the belief that design and science together have the power to innovate and create outcomes that alone neither could potentially create. Um, and just to say on my behalf for 
how I came to be in the science, um, because my first experience actually of the science was seeing these, these folks, um, their product walked down the runway along with 45 other creations that came down the runway last September. Um, in my career as an industrial designer, I've worked on, gosh, too many innovation teams to count, but in industrial design, we um, always look to science for innovation, and I've always worked on products for extreme users and early adopters, whether it's medical consumers or military or um, new product innovations. So often, creativity, we can create and we can ideate and innovate, but then science often has a solution. So when I saw the fashion show at the Media Lab last September, and the beauty and then the science that was underpinning it and had given the solutions, um, I was just completely blown away. And then for me to see that these partnerships of joining a scientist and the designer together, fundamentally giving science a voice and an advocate um, is something I personally very, very much believe in. And then also to partner together in a way that enables us as people to the creative, the designer, yes, it's trained, but follow your curiosity into science. And the designer who is, or the, sorry, the scientist who is, yes, trained as a scientist, but follow your curiosity and creativity into design. I think we all have that in our culture has separated these two, and I think that's a steam conversation, of course. So immediately to science, it was like, I'm in. Um, so. That's my passion and, and how I came to be in the science. That said, we're going to talk about what they produced and how they became the award winners. So um, how did both of you hear about the science and how did you come up with the name Cyto Couture? <laughs> <laughs> Which was the first milestone we had to deliver. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I think I will start saying how, we, how I was aware of that and how I decided to join it. Yeah. So it actually, it was. You can by, speak up a little bit. Yeah. So actually, it was by chance. Like, I almost almost all of my friends are scientists. Unfortunately, like <laughs> we all have the same circle of friends, and I was lucky enough to live with another Swedish scientist that met Yuli, the new Yuli that was the the founder of this project. And we were at dinner one night, and they were starting to brainstorming about this idea. What do you think about? joining the, the science with the fashion. And I found it was a great idea for many reasons. One's because they have many things in common. And the other one, as a scientist, there is this bias that scientists, they don't know nothing about fashion. And they wear ugly clothes. And they, they are, there is this kind of stereotype and bias. So I thought that it was powerful on two levels, of bringing together two different fields and also to make scientists appear cool to the to the normal people and not like crazy <laughs> crazy animals that they are closing in the labs so i think that that was driving me to work with with the science yeah. well um my if i'm not wrong i remember uh we were having this sustainable fashion exhibit in jp in last a couple of years ago and i met julie she was just happening she happened to attend the show and she was the one who told me well, I'm starting this initiative, trying to get designers to work with scientists to come up with fashion projects out of out of their based on their scientist research. And she just said, "You should. I think you should participate." I was like, "Yeah, cool. That's <laughs> it's a nice idea." And then she gave me her car or something. And then I think at at some point I went to the website and saw that the first part was done, which was picking the 60 or something scientists that wanted to initiate the project. Uh, and then designers will come like in the second stage and, and look for scientists, let's say like in some sort of like a match.com kind of <laughs> setup. So um, when, when she invited me, I was, I was still aware of what was the project about, but then afterwards, and I realized the level of scientists involved and everybody from like great institutions all around the world uh, making the first, taking the first step of saying, okay, my research 
uh, I want my research to be part of this project. And that was, that was very exciting to me. And that's when I say, okay, sure. This, this sounds like a great project and I, w I will apply and, 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 and here we are after, after the, the end of the project. Um, yeah. Talk about the name. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, in our many meetings when we were discussing the project, at some point we say, okay, come up with ideas and words and scientific words and design words and fashion words and terms. And I think we, we have this list of very, very yeah. long list of names and elements. And, and we end up uh, picking Saito Couture because the connection with sales and the connection with fashion of art couture and um, like handmade, one of a kind projects. And, and I was very excited to learn Laura's research on how she seeds cells into these protein structures to give them like specific shapes. And I was thinking, well, just that's just like draping fabric on a, on a dress form. You, you have an instructor and you're I applying. Think that those are the pictures of our first um, talking. Yeah, those are the sketches, the sketches. We, and the things we were talking about when we were in a cafe or in Saito Couture was born. Yeah. A little louder. Speak up a little louder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and to that point, so Laura, if you can tell us a little bit more about your scientific lab research. Okay. <laughs> So uh, that's also another reason why I participate into the science, because so you can promote the science to the general and public. And speak up a little bit more. Um, <laughs> we have a big okay. audience. I, I try to, <laughs> to scream as much as I can. <laughs> Good. So what we do in the lab, as I was saying before, I am a material scientist, so I work on creating new materials or using material for application into the clinics. So one of the projects that was what the science and cytokuture is about is creating materials that can change the behavior of the cells into a lab. So then, then we can decide how those cells can, can act before implanting them into, into the body that has some injury to help the body regenerate itself in a faster and more controlled way. So all of my work is about architecture, like how, what kind of structure, what kind of architecture is needed for the cells to act in a specific way. And all of this, the picture that I applied for cytokuture, they depict that, they depict the shape of the cells on different architecture and how that then in the lab can be characterized for biomedical application. And so that's the basic of what I do, <laughs> one of the basic things that I do. <laughs> and so for you, was, um, was the designer application obvious, or was it something that you felt you had to sort of force for you? Like uh, in the process? Yeah, so bringing your lab out of the science and into the creative world for you personally. No, I don't think it was a forced thing. So it came uh, pretty naturally. Yeah. Like pretty, yeah, it, it was something, it, it was just a way of uh, describing it in a different, in a different language. Yeah. But it came out pretty naturally. Wonderful. And so Carlos, for you, <laughs> what was it like for you as a designer to enter into Laura's world of science and science in general? I think uh, the most, um, interesting for me was to be able to see like a real person representing science you know I, yeah. I, I think for designers or in if I want to say the public in general if you're not related to the scientific world or you don't have a relative in that world it's so foreign to you it's like you can only imagine labs with closed doors people wearing white coats and doing all kind of crazy stuff with equipment and and that, that is why just one of the stereotypes, but it's very disconnected. So when I was, I think the first time we sat together and we started talking, it was like, well, yeah, I can relate. I can see like what she's doing. It's not that different from what an artist will do when he's following um, a path or like I'm exploring this material or I'm exploring this color. It's the same, but uh, just using scientific method. But the, but the concept behind is the creativity. I think it's the same. It's like, yeah. it's somebody creating out of some ideas and some uh, imagination. It's like, okay, I, wanna, I want this to happen. I don't know really why, 
I don't know how it's going to happen, but uh, I, I'll keep trying, and I'm going to keep trying. And it's all about being creative in order to use all those paths and get to that point when it's like, okay, I found the solution, or yeah. this is the answer for my question. That's true. I, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, we had 45 other, or 44 other projects on the runway as well, and I'm going to see if I can do this without it being a total snafu. So we're going to show one other project because everyone had their different way of collaborating on the runway, and then we're going to come back to you. Um, and this is Tal and Tatiana, if I can do this without a tech glitch. What do you see? <laughs> For me, the, the, the fun part is to take something that you don't see to see it all, or to see it big. Because that is what I do with my fabrics. I try to, from something small, create something big. Tal shared some of the microscopic pictures he had. But that lets you see them a little bit better. Mm -hmm. These petri dishes are the inspiration for our collaboration, and they're filled with bacteria. You can see all the texture here. The other one is just the flat, flat. part. Mm -hmm. The kind of biology that I do is to reprogram bacteria to detect or treat cancer. So when you look at this dress, it's made up of a print of cancer cells taken from a microscope image. And when you turn the lights off, you can actually see that these small little sprinkles are these real fluorescent bacteria that are painted onto the print of the dress. It's a mix of glow-in-the-dark paint and bacteria. We just thought, why not? Everybody's so afraid of bacteria, but in this case, bacteria is not bad. It's doing something healthy in a way. It's combating the cancer cells. I developed this technology where you take a probiotic bacteria and you do a urine sample and you can test whether there's a tumor present in your body. And it's these bacteria that are on the dress, yeah. Everything about this is exciting. This collaboration has been an experiment in and of itself. Try and error, try and error. <laughs> we just sort of played around together. But when I was little by little putting it together, I saw the whole entire garment and I thought, oh, perfect. All right, so that was the Quorum 54 team who also created a really, really beautiful, completely different product um, because every science, every partnership was different. Um, you can see them on the Fashion to Science website in extraordinary depth going through the science. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> like, I'm still learning, um, and I've been involved in, for months and months, and it's, it's phenomenal. But um, through the creative process, through the science, and then through bringing pe two people together, you get completely unique outcomes. So there were 61 teams originally from 47 cities around the world. So you had teams working remotely in many cases. And that also influenced how people collaborated as well. Um, and so that's Tatiana and Tal's sort of collaborative uh, process. And how would you, the two of you, um, sort of explain your collaborative experience and process? We brainstormed a lot. And yeah. we were lucky to be in the same city. Yeah. So we actually trying to make appointments where we had yeah. breakfast over the we, we were both very busy with our normal schedule <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was really meeting for breakfast on a sunday morning in a coffee place or after work for a happy hour kind of <laughs> let, let's get our brain and pick up each other brain and see what's what, what comes up so I think we were very, both of us were very hands-on, and correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. <laughs> like we were, both of us had a say in what we were doing. At the beginning, it was just the first meeting. I was talking about what is being a science scientist, what is what my work was about, and he was taking notes. And the next one, he was telling me about how we make the dress, what his mental <laughs> process when he creates something. And then after that, there were more the two of us talking at the same time on how we wanted this moving forward. So, yeah, that's yeah. I think it was very it was very easy going, like um, nice um, collaboration. Like we were able just to sit down together and say, 
what do you think? What's your idea? What, do you think this makes sense? Do you think this doesn't make sense? And I was just trying to like show Laura ideas from the fashion world that somewhat can be connected to her research. And obviously at the beginning when you start, there is no it's a total uh, blank canvas. You have no idea. It's like, oh, should I, what are we going to do? A shirt? Uh, we're going to do, uh, I don't know, a long dress? It's going to be something uh, for exports? Or it's going to be something that uh, is going to be a nightgown? So it, it was completely open to any, any interpretation. But that was also an interesting part of like how, how can you connect the two worlds and collaborate and come up with an answer? Because at the end, that's, I think that was the also positive thing about the contest is like you have to deliver something, right? It, can, it cannot stay in a very vague, uh, abstract, like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do a dress that somewhat is going to do this and this and about this and you show an illustration, but you actually had to create a functional garment. And, and yeah, it was, it was, it was, it, we got to the point where Laura would go to my studio and cut fabrics and play with the, with the little wooden mannequin. I loved and, it. <laughs> and, and, and be able to, to actually experiment more than just, you know, giving me a, a scientific idea to, for me to take inspiration from. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a breakthrough moment in the process? I don't know if there was a breakthrough moment in yeah. terms of how we create the garment. Or even getting to idea, 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 and then, oh, it's that one. Uh, no, I, I, not for me, at yeah. least. Like, I was following more of the, there was not really a breakthrough moment. Yeah. yeah. I, I see that, I think the, the part that inspires me, maybe if it was a breakthrough moment, but inspired me the most, was when she was explaining how different protein structures with different shapes will grow different cells. And I was thinking, well, maybe that's where the concept is, right? We don't want to... We didn't want it to be literal and say, let's take this image from her research and yeah. use the color or print it somewhere. I was thinking, what, what is the concept behind the whole idea? And it was these three-dimensional microstructures where the this, this cells will grow with different shapes. And, and I think that was what grabbed my attention. And that, that was, I think, at the end, was, was reflected in the, in the garment we created. It's like this, this idea of something that takes the shape of whatever structure is applied to them. Yeah, so you actually sort of led into my next question, actually, which was that sort of Tal and Tatiana, um, they took the interpretation of literally taking the scientific matter and using it in the design, um, and then illustrating the science through the, the printing process onto the, to the textile itself flowing as it would under the microscope, which was a really great illustration of that science. Whereas I think you, the two of you did a really extraordinary thing where you literally manifested, if, I, if I'm going to, you'll tell me if I'm right or not, <laughs> but sort of, it seems like you literally manifested what the cells do in the design and style and format of the garment. Is that what you were intending to do or am I... Yeah. Right? No, exa it's exactly <laughs> right. Like, and that, so probably going back to your first, the previous question, what yeah. was the breakthrough? When we came up, as Carlos was saying, to that point of saying we can make a dress that change depending on who's wearing it and yeah. what type of structure he wants to make. So the piece of fabric is the same. Yeah. And then you can wear it wherever you want, depending on your mood of that day, if you want a skirt or if you want a cape, or if you are a man or if you are a girl. And that was also another thing that related to my line of research, because I work with endothelial cells, and those are cells that there are in everybody's bodies. Like, it doesn't matter if you are a kid, if you are old, if you, have, if you are a guy or a girl. So the ability to create a set of clothes that can be weared by everybody was kind of really representing the high level uh, of the research that I'm doing, not the, the, the specific details. Mm -hmm. So I think we were. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I think the judges and. Realize that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the judges really, really grabbed onto that. So um, the last question that I would have for you, given the context of um, the STEAM conversation, Cambridge Science Festival, is 
would you recommend to other designers and scientists to participate in the science or also just in science design collaborations in general? And how has this impacted your experience and your profession overall? Well, I think uh, absolutely yes. I think it's so interesting to see two separate worlds collaborating. And I think whenever you pair an artist as designer, some, someone that works in the creative fields with any other profession, that even if they're all creative, like they're not considered creative per se, I, I think you will always come up with the most um, interesting, uh, innovative answers. I, I was talking with somebody the other day, it's like you can pair a lawyer with a designer and I'm sure something interesting is going to come out with that. <laughs> and it, not, not to say that, uh, <laughs> that law school or law is, is boring, but it's like it's not connected. It's, it's not considered something that you do on, on your creative uh, space. Yeah. So whatever you create this, like, and similarly, like, not related connections, something interesting is going to happen. You, you, don't, you might not don't know what or how, but... Um, it, it certainly, the designer working with somebody else will come up with something that he will never think alone and the same. If this other person was working alone, uh, will never have the same answer as like when working with a creative person. So, yeah. um, I think that's a really good moment to um, invite the audience to partake in this conversation. And, um, you know, I, maybe I'll just start a comment, which is, um, <coughs> What, what, what the science is doing is very much in, uh, in line with what Catalyst Conversations is doing. And I really feel that this synergy of... Um, so this kind of synergy between art and science, I think it sort of brings science to the sort of to the mainstream and art to the to you know in that direction. So I think it's really fruitful, and I think it's really a model that um, I think universities and uh, academic institutions are are also you know starting to think about. So that's good. Anyway, um, maybe someone has some, a comment or a question. So I was hoping you could talk more about the garments themselves mm -hmm. and what's the next step. Will these become available? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Well, yeah, I think that's that's part of the the science um, initiatives is that as as the contest grows and the whole organization becomes stronger, mm -hmm. I think the idea of, like the results from these works will become uh, support like they will have some s sort of support <laughs> that will make yeah. them into a viable business. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's not very clear for us now, but we definitely see that there is potential to do, to turn this idea into something that can become a business. This is all in the, the spirit of democratization of science and art. Perhaps you could just make the patterns or the how-to available on the web. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I mean, it's like it's open to any any idea, and that's what you said is a big. I think it's a big part of the conversation is to to make science more visible. I think that was the main interest of Julie's idea is like scientists only read each other's papers and they only go to Congress when they're all together. So, <laughs> so like people like me will never learn about Laura's research if I was not working with her. And I think that's the background of maybe you can create garments that uh, will tell scientific uh, stories to the general public and make it more visible. Yeah. Some of the um, some of the partnerships have actually spun out to startups, also. Um, so that's a very very exciting outcome as well. Uh, since we have so many in the room, I was wondering what you could say to the young people um, who are aspiring scientists or artists, um, and just in terms of your your pathway to get to where you are. No, no. Okay. That's, that's, that's for you, Laura. I think that, that's, that's for me. That's for me. Okay. So I think that. So m my advice is to follow what you like. So as of my a little bit of my background, all of my family they are all lawyers. <laughs> just, just as a like everybody from my mom and from my dad's side. 
I always wanted to be a scientist. Like I destroyed the vacuum cleaner at home just to put it back together again. And there was always some pieces that came out and my mom was following me in the house, like you broke that again. But that was, I like it. Like I liked to play with things and I was lucky enough to be in an environment where I could do what I wanted. Like when, when I applied for being an engineer, there were only five girls into the class and they were a class of 35. So I think that's also why I want to be involved into out outreaching uh, initiative just to say that girls can do whatever they want and guys can do whatever they want. Like there is not a bias and if you are an engineer or a scientist, it doesn't mean that you cannot be passionate about fashion and, and other things. Like you just need to follow what you want and, and then everything will come from there. Yeah, and I would actually jump in on that too because I, from the creative side, I, um, Came from a lawyer's a family of <laughs> lawyers too, actually. So probably all the not, creativity comes in one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about the creative route. Um, lawyers and bankers and teachers, who are lovely, and um, I didn't know that I had a chance to be a creative professionally, honestly. Um, and it, it worked out through the wonderful wandering of my path, but um, it wasn't until college that I knew that there was a way to be creative, and what I saw as play was something I could do professionally. Um, and now there are so many ways to find that out at a really young age that things that you know you do for fun that you know I was making these architectural sketches for fun or building little houses for our pet mice and um, constantly and, and it turns out I, I could have been doing that for a, a career. But I just I didn't know. Um, and it took me a while to get there, and now I think there are a lot more avenues to explore. And one of the best pieces of advice I got a lot later in life was just ask everyone questions, ask questions constantly. And um, and now that I'm a teacher too, I I realize that if you go out there at any age, including mine, older, younger, and you ask questions and you ask people their story, everyone wants to tell their story. They're excited about their story, so. If there's something you want to learn about or you think you might want to pursue, whether it's science or design or fashion or law or whatever, go ask people because generally people are really receptive and will tell you their story and are happy to talk about themselves. We all are. Um, so go ask because it might be the thing for you or it might not be the thing for you and you'll find that out that day. So. Yes, so how to stimulate and how to combine the science and uh, the creativity for young child. And I'm not really sure how to <laughs> answer That's a you. Really question. Actually, that might be a Kyle. Kyle was involved in doing art and science with a pretty young student, so maybe you could answer. So is that sorry, the question? The creativity and science for the very young, like really in infant young. Oh. Uh, I work with them. Um, I work with more is middle school, but I think uh, I think it comes down to once again and what what I have sort of set up for this activity today. Um, this creative process and exploring, and I think it's just allowing kind of what you're saying, allowing that play mm -hmm. to happen. Yeah. And so whether and I, I think at that very young age the children don't necessarily know whether it's science or art, and I think it's just allowing them to delve into whatever they're, they're kind of tying into, and um, and I think there are just multiple ways by giving giving different tools. Uh, so, like I have set up here, I have, I'm just going to tell you that I have. <laughs> but actually, you know what? Cut, cut, cut forward. forward. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to do the hands-on um, Art very soon. Yeah. Kyle's going to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for coming, first of all, uh, and thank you to the speakers. So 
Uh, like Deb said, I direct a program called the Cambridge Creativity Commons, and one of the things that we've been focusing on in the last couple of years is uh, I've been working with, I'm a visual artist, and I've been working with science teachers to think about integrating art into science uh, to enrich creativity in the classroom in and out of school. Uh, so one of the main things that I've seen as an overlap um, is this process between art and science. The, and I saw a couple of slides up here thinking about the inspiration or imagination, um, you know, thinking about what tools and materials you're going to use. Then what about just the actual creating? And then you have to experiment. And then you might fail, but then you try again. And then you experiment and so you go through these different what are called iterations. Uh, and then there's maybe a critique process where you share your work and get feedback. Say, what is this all about? And then the final exhibit, which might be an art exhibit, it might be a fashion show, it might be in a science journal. Um, and so what I have back here in these tables are these different different tables with a inspiration. So I've laid out some images that you can look at for inspiration to imagine what you might make. Uh, so I have science concepts, weather, uh, patterns in nature, and also some things to do with the human body. Uh, and then on the next table, there are materials. So take a look at what materials might I use to create something around a certain science concept I chose. And I do have pencils and paper at that first table that you can start sketching or making notes. The third table is where you actually create. So I have supplies and materials for you, for you to actually think about how can you create something based on this original science concept. And then if you're worth thinking maybe if you'd like to leave it here or just show it off while we continue to talk. Uh, and I also wanted to highlight that I have a group of students here from the East End House uh, that are going to be exhibiting their kinetic sculptures that they've created over the last uh, five or six weeks um, that are going to be at the table in the back. So please ask them questions about their process and they're excited to show their work today. Okay, so um, thank you so much. And I think maybe people might be interested yes. in yes. over here with Carlos. So um, we can please also be, do come up, uh, yes. come up over here. Yeah. And then uh, kids and, and adults can go back there and Kyle will go back there. And um, Kids of all ages. Kids yes. <laughs> And uh, just to let you know, our next Catalyst event is Tuesday, uh, Monday, April 27th, over at the Bartos Theater at MIT. And um, Alberta Chu and Murray Reynolds are going to be talking about something called Face Topo. They've developed, uh, or they are developing um, a project uh, and trying to uh, capture the genome of all the faces in the world. Um, so they've, they've just developed this and we're going to talk about it. So thank you very much for coming and uh, please stay on the <laughs>